I love the real estate investor mindset for franchising. And especially in the moment that we're in right now with the economy, I'm working with so many people that have a portfolio, but the interest rate interest rates may be making it hard or the limited availability of real estate to invest in or the high price points. All of these reasons are driving real estate investors who are sitting on money to look at franchising. Kim, welcome to the show. Let, let's start out with who you are and how did you get to where you are at today? Thank you, Jim. I am a franchise consultant. Been doing this for, it'll be 23 years in 2024. How does anybody get into franchising? It's like you start looking for freedom. You start looking for opportunity to scale your wealth. You start looking for systems and processes because being an entrepreneur is so daunting. And all of those reasons are the reasons I ended up looking at franchising and finding what I'm doing, which is a franchise called Fran Choice. My business is to help other people learn about the value of investing in a franchise. Excellent. Well, you know, this is a real estate show. So why should real estate investors be even interested in, in hearing about franchises? Such a great question <laughs> to get right to the heart of the matter. I love the real estate investor mindset for franchising. And especially in the moment that we're in right now with the economy, I'm working with so many people that have a portfolio, but the interest rate interest rates may be making it hard or the limited availability of real estate to invest in or the high price points. All of these reasons are driving real estate investors who are sitting on money to look at franchising. So because franchising allows you to buy down the learning curve of starting a business, right? You're buying that business in a box. We don't need you to take three to five years to get to profitability, right? So you, you can put your money into the business. Now it won't be passive. It doesn't mean it's going to be full time either. Right? right? There's a very elusive term in franchising called semi-absentee. Now, not every business allows an owner to be kind of in that CEO role. I'll, de I'll define a semi-absentee investor as if you are a savvy investor, maybe you've owned a business before, maybe you haven't, but you understand business and you have some leadership skill and some organizational skill, right? These are what make the term so elusive because right. everybody's a little bit different. So if you have those things, semi-absentee to you could mean you're the CEO, you hire a general manager from day one. That could be your wife. It could be your kid, like, right? It could be somebody you just know that you worked for you in a job, somebody that you just hire by running an ad, but you feel you can give that accountability and responsibility to. And that's what would allow you to not need to be there every minute the business is operating. And that may be 20 to 30 hours in the beginning, but then once you know the person is the right person, stepping back to probably 10 to 15 hours. So that's kind of by definition what semi-absentee would mean. But we don't use the word absent we do have investor type models that come with a general manager and the skills to find that person or the laundromat industry. I'm the queen of the laundromat because I work with so many real estate investors and you guys understand like the tenant mentality. So yeah. that laundromat, that's an example of a semi absentee, but really trending more toward even lower hours than I've already talked about, maybe five to 10 hours a week once it's up and operating. So yeah, the whole, uh, my point is it won't be absent like plug and play, but let's be real. Even your real estate portfolio really isn't that until you True. have a team. <laughs> True. Well, so let, let's talk about it. You, you mentioned laundromats. If I'm, if I'm going to invest in a franchise or become a franchise owner, I don't really want to run a McDonald's, right? And that's what I think a lot of us think about when we think franchise, I'm, I don't want to, I don't want to deal with McDonald's, right? If, if I'm going to McDonald's, I'm going through the drive through I'm not going to own it. So can you talk about the different types of franchises and, and, and what, what is even available, right? We've talked about laundry so far, but I know there's a ton of different things and you talked about some are more passive than others. So can you kind of start on the ones that you really got to dive into and spend a lot of time on? And then the ones that maybe, 
you might be able to do less work and just pass it off to others? Okay, so fantastic question, Jim. And in fact, this is why Kim Daly has a business, right? And why I've been doing this so successfully for so many years. I have the relationships with the right franchisors for you. So the breadth of franchising is so deep. There are franchises in all different industries, and you're so spot on. The majority of people think a franchise is Chick-fil-A or McDonald's, and nobody really wants to get into food, right? And I don't blame you. So I am America's top franchise consultant. I place more people into franchise businesses than any other consultant out there and have been doing that for over a decade of my 20 years. I've been at the top level and I do not show food. You will have to beg me. I have some specialty dessert things that are very scalable. But to answer your question, I love low investment, high margin, reoccurring services. So what does that look like? Well, how about if you're in the real estate world, how about things that cater to the homeowner? So maybe it's a business that picks up dog poop in the backyard. (laughs) But while you're there, you also offer other services around the yard, like repairing um, irrigation systems or repairing a fence. How about selling a fence, installing a fence? Not where you're doing it, you use subs. You use guys who know how to install a fence. Your business is the sales and marketing side. Most of the time, Jim, in the franchise business that's in the home services, the reason we don't need owners with prior experience or industry knowledge is because we're using the subcontractor model. So you're going to not compete against the trade guys who are so good at what they do. You're going to be the sales and marketing arm. You're going to be the one with the marketing plan from the franchisor. You're going to be the one with the sales team that goes out bids on the job, wins the customer's trust and respect, and then brings those subs in to do the work. And that keeps your payroll very, very small, right? So that's kind of the model. I love the home services space. I love any, I mean, and in the home services space, we do stuff in the house, like the softer things like floor and windows, paint, you know, California closets to things out in the yard, which is a massive market too. Like I said, fencing, patios, pools, outdoor lighting, power washing, you know, concrete stamping, that's amazing. The things that you can do with concrete to make it look like marble, granite, pavers, and it's freaking concrete. It's like one third the price. (laughs) So, you know, and I, I'm a fitness girl. I'm a wellness girl personally. So I love that space, right? A lot of times, but people worry about fitness and the fad, but don't limit your thinking if you're out there going, yeah, but there's so many gyms, Kim, why would I, why would I want to open another one? That's where the conversation for you and I would begin. And I'm not going to talk you into anything. I'm going to talk you through it. I'm going to put you in front of franchisors and let them tell their story to you. Because if they're awarding franchises and you have a passion for fitness and your market is open, don't limit what's possible for you if you think it would be awesome to own the next personal training studio in your market and be the customer avatar, right? Go ahead and keep an open mind. And let's explore. Since COVID, Jim, there are all these like preventative health businesses like cryotherapy and IV drip bars. And people are so much, they're so much more aware now of like taking control of their health. There's a lot of like functional medicine type places. Um, There's just endless, endless opportunity, which is why I love my business so much because I'm privy to see like all of it. But just because a business is now a franchise, does not mean it's a good franchise or the right investment for you. And this is the importance of having someone like Kim Daly, who has not just the title of franchise consultant, but years of experience and relationship and knowledge that you get to lean into and learn from so that you can then make a good, educated and informed decision. And my services are totally free. Okay, I, and I want to get into that, um, but you, you mentioned a couple of things. So finding subs, like you're talking about subcontractors, right? Does the franchise model help with that? Because I know when I need an electrician or I need someone to fix my irrigation, I don't know how to – it's it's problem finding those people, right? So I don't have that skill. Where do I get that? Does that come in the in the package? 
Yes, that that should definitely, the recruiting part is definitely going to be a big part since COVID, right? And the great resignation. The recruiting part of what franchisors are offering um, is definitely part of your due diligence process, along with the customer acquisition part, which is what we always know we've been buying, right? A franchise is always sort of a, a sales and marketing engine with a clearly defined customer avatar, but both now are are part of your due diligence process when we are, you know, going through the one to two month exploration with the franchise. Okay. And I want to get to that. Um, maybe part of this question, you, you said, um, when you're awarded a franchise, now I thought I was purchasing it awarded implies that they have to accept me. They're not just going to take my money. So can you talk about that process, how they have to approve you and maybe in that conversation, you can talk about the one to two month process that you take somebody through. Yeah, so that's a great question. So you're so right. Franchises, it's not your opportunity to buy until it's been awarded to you by the franchisor. So both parties have to feel like this is a mutual fit. Ultimately, when you invest in a franchise, like everybody knows, like I said, it's business in a box, but what are you actually buying? What you're actually buying, Jim, is a partnership, right? This whole idea that you're in business for yourself, but not by yourself. So when people come to me and they go, well, I've looked at franchises before, but I never found the right one. When I really listen to what they say after asking some probing questions, they were looking down at what the business did rather than up at who is doing the business. So it's leadership that adapted models to a pandemic and kept franchisees from failing. It's leadership that adapts models to recessions and different economies and competition and, and even the customer demand, making sure that what you're offering is remaining relevant to the changing customer times, right? So it's always about who you're in business with, not what you're doing. So that's the first part. And that's where I come in. I have all of these relationships. So this one to two month process is not just about you learning about who you're potentially doing business with, but it's about the franchisor learning who they may potentially be doing business with because they want to award a franchise to somebody who fits into their family, who's going to be fun to work with, who's going to be open and coachable, who's financially qualified, right? They don't want to award you a business where you're scraping pennies to get to the, you know, to the finish line and then you have no extra should you need it, right? They don't want to award a franchise to somebody who's ego is so in the way that they're not open and coachable to following the franchisor's way, or at least asking, hey, I have an idea, but why do you do it this way, right? Maybe the franchisor has already thought about doing it the way you're thinking about, and there's a reason they're not doing it that way. Those are the types of things that ultimately lead franchisees to failure. And so if the franchisor can do a good upfront job of sniffing out who's going to be open and coachable and follow their lead and who's going to be fun to work with and bring life and energy and posit positivity to their culture, then that's just going to help everybody enter into this, right? Into a mutually beneficial relationship. And how do you, how do you, do you work with the your clients to find the right opportunity, right? When you were mentioning, you know, the first thing you mentioned was going up and uh, scooping dog poop. I, I do enough of that just in my daily life. I'm not going to buy that franchise. So how do you find a franchise that, that will work for me? Oh, Jim, do you know how profitable that business is? That's the silliest 80 bucks a month I spend and it is never going off of my credit card, right? So it may not be for you, but for the person that's not status oriented, who's like, yeah, that's the most recession resistant, long-term reoccurring business out there. I'm in like to tell me more. It right. is for them. So I'm just playing with you. But so what happens, Jim, when people come to me, I gather the data. I want to get to know you personally, professionally, financially. I want to understand your vision. So you're building this real estate portfolio. Why are we talking? What is the goal? How many cash flowing assets do you want to have? What is your financial like picture look like in three, five, 10 years? And what portion of that would you want to build through the franchise? Because wealth is created through scale in real estate and in franchising. So we always kind of want to start with the end in mind and then back end it into the skills you have. Like if you come from a sales background, do you want to run a sales organization? If you're an HR professional and you're and you love the idea of creating jobs in your community, 
community and being an employer, I want to lean you into businesses where you might need some people, right? So I want to look at what you're trying to create, the leader, the owner that you want to be, the role you want to play, or more importantly, the role you don't want to play. And then I, using my knowledge, relationships of what's out there, I bring three to five. So this is a curated list of a small group of companies that match what you told me you were looking for and that you're financially qualified for and that are open in the market where you want the business to be. And then I'm just not going to hand them to you and go away because you don't know what you don't know about how to say yes or no to this. So I'm going to teach you as you're working through the one to two month process with the franchisor so they can teach you about marketing and training and technology and future opportunity. Kim Daly is going to be your mindset coach. Like, how do you assimilate what you're hearing? How do you, if you love them all, how do you start to decide, right? I'm going to help you kind of figure out that matrix and what's most important to you and and kind of help you get to that. Yes, I'm the resource for, for financing if you're looking for lending. I'm the resource for how to say yes or no to any franchise. But you'll be working with the specific franchisors we've curated for you to figure out among them. Is there one that feels like the right investment opportunity for you? And again, it's all for free for you. I get paid by franchisors. So if we reverse this, I'm like a recruiter for franchising. So I offer a B2B service. I'm cutting down the amount of time franchisors have to spend sifting through lots of people who email them overnight or I'm delivering, you can look at it the other way, I'm delivering, hand delivering, high quality, motivated, financially qualified people who are maybe interested, fit the model that the franchisor is looking for, but I'm delivering them right to the inbox of those franchisors. So when they pick up the phone and call you, they know you're legit. They know who you are because of me. They roll out that red carpet and you get an A plus experience just in terms of learning about the franchise. So it's a win-win for both sides. And I'm just happy to be like the e-harmony. <laughs> yeah, that's great. So, you know, I know you, you've, you've been doing this a long time and you must have a ton of franchise owners who are super successful. I, I don't want to hear about them. I want to hear about the ones that failed. Why does somebody fail at this, right? Because as you said, you set them up They've been uh, awarded this franchise by the franchise owner. So it's all set up there and, and it, it's meant to work. So when it doesn't work, and I'm sure there's been some failures, why, why doesn't it work? It's so funny that everybody wants to talk about the failures. It's hilarious, Jim. But <laughs> That's how you I, learn. Get it. I get it. So failure is, it's a nuanced word. What does that mean? Did the person quit? Did they get a health issue? But I'm sure you mean like they were doing everything they thought they should and it still didn't work. What I find to be true in that scenario, the franchisors typically say that it is um, the person wasn't following the system. Like, what does that even mean, right? That can mean many different things. I've recently stepped out as a keynote speaker for franchising because I have this message because I am a franchisee. And for eight years, I was an average performing girl here at Franchise. And then one year later, back in 2011, I made history in my industry, building the largest business that had ever been built. I did three and a half times more revenue in 2011 than I did in 2010 or any of my previous years. And I've spent the last 13 years incrementally improving what I did and getting better at all parts of my business and growing it and growing it. So because I've stood in sort of not a failure place, but the, you know, just creating the same year over and over, which was lackluster at best. And then history making, I sort of had this aha moment like, okay, so I'm the same me. Franchise was the same process, but I created two very different realities. So if you come to me and you ask me the question you just asked, I'm going to put it back on you. And I'm going to say that failure is owner created, not franchisor created. So Yes. Are there franchisors that fail? There are, but I am very blessed to be a part of Franchise and we carefully screen and do what we can to prevent that from happening with the companies we work with. So that's not typically what's happening in my world. It's people losing sight of their dream. It's people forgetting to dream and have goals, clearly defined goals, executable goals, daily executable goals. It's people not being willing to grow into the role 
of salesperson or leader to help solve the problems of their business. It's people buying a business thinking that you, Mr. Franchisor, were supposed to do this for me. And I, I don't mean it in any judging or condemning way. I was that person for eight years. So my coaching, when I say I'm a mindset coach, you're going to be learning from the franchisors how this is going to go down, marketing and training and technology. You're going to be learning from Kim Daly how not to fail. And that, more importantly, how to go live the life of your dreams and build and scale a successful franchise business. That's what I see as my secret sauce for my candidates. That's great. And I, I've, we're running up on time. And I do want to ask this last, last question. You kind of talked about it a little bit, but how is franchising affected by downturns in the economy, possible recession, interest rates have gone up. There's just so much uncertainty in real estate, in the economy. So is it the same for franchising? And you mentioned, you know, some people did really well in COVID, maybe others didn't. So what's the outlook in 2024 for franchising? Such a great question. So this is what I would say. If your heart yearns to own a business or this conversation has inspired you to want to think about diversification, since we cannot control the economy, you have to get in. If now is the time for you, now is the time. If you learn when it's the hardest, then awesome. You have muscle and skill that you won't need when it gets easier. And guess what? When it gets harder again, five, 10 years from now, because it will, yep. you won't even be stressing about it. You'll be like, I started in a recession, right? So the franchisor, if a business is impacted, the franchisor is going to help you prepare for that from the beginning by telling you, oh, our costs have gone up or whatever. They're going to prepare you financially. It's the mindset that I would prepare you for. And the mindset of a business owner is like, I'm in it to win it. I realize the economy is not mine to control. And this is really, Jim, what I realized 13 years ago, I spent my time for the first eight years focused on all the things that were never mine to control at the total expense and the time and energy and positive energy on the things that were mine to control. And what those were, you'll have to call me to find out because I know we're running out of time. But that's where my conversation and my coaching with people will help set you free from needing the economy to be a certain way for you to be able to live the life that you want. It's nonsense. That's great. That's well said. This has been a fantastic conversation. Um, if listeners are interested in learning more and answering those questions you mentioned, um, what's the best way they can connect with you? Amazing. So, so many ways. Go to my website, The Daily Coach, D A L Y. But if you're curious, go to Instagram, go to YouTube. I have nearly 800 videos all on wow. kimdaily.tv. I am the social media queen. Love the video. Love to uh, just educate people so you don't make investment decisions that you regret. That's really the whole pitch of what I do. Not to talk anybody into this, to talk you through it so you understand it. So whether you're saying yes or no, it's an intelligent yes or no. That's awesome. We'll put all that in the show notes. Thank you, Kim. This has been great. We appreciate your time. Thank you. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Thank you for listening to the Real Estate Syndication Show. It has been a pleasure to be the guest host today. If you would like more information about Left Field Investors and how we educate limited partners, provide a network, and give access to deal flow, please visit leftfieldinvestors.com or reach out to me directly at jim at leftfieldinvestors.com. I hope you learned a lot from the show today. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and share the Real Estate Syndication Show with your friends so they can also build wealth in real estate. You can also go to lifebridgecapital.com and start investing today. 